What is going on everybody? Welcome to the second part of our Python and programming for finance tutorial series. In this part, what we're going to be talking about is actually building our own algorithm on top of Quantopian, but of course in Python, mainly using the zipline module. We just so happen to be using the Quantopian IDE uh, in their web app. Now, uh, in the last tutorial, we showed their version. They gave us a sample algorithm which worked on, you know, the five moving average moving over the current price and in this tutorial we're going to do a simple moving average crossover so somewhat a sim somewhat similar uh, but we're going to code it all line by line ourselves so we can understand what's all going on here but before we get into that congratulations on making it to the second tutorial that's actually where we're going to lose the most viewers so uh, from part one to part two if you made it this far you're already a winner so congratulations now uh, what you're going to want to do is make sure you're logged into Quantopian and then go ahead and click on algorithms up here and what we're going to go ahead and do is create a new algorithm and I'm going to have this algorithm we're going to call it SMA uh, crossover now a simple moving average, if you're not familiar with moving averages, go ahead and create uh, create the algorithm. If you're not familiar with moving averages, what they are is basically you take a window of days. So we're, we're going to work with that first, you know, one price a day, basically. So we're going to take the past 20 days at every given point and be like, okay, what was the average for those, you know, 20 days? And that would be a 20 simple moving average. So then we can compare a 20 to like a 50 and when the 20 crosses over the 50, that means price is trending up. And when the 20 crosses below the 50, so that's when, the, so if 20 crosses above the 50, I should really stress that, that means the price is trending upward. Whereas if the 20 crosses below the 50, that signals that the price is trending possibly downward. So when you create an algorithm, um, you should see kind of this, you'll have initialized and handled data. Now you're gonna have that every time because these are just required uh, bits of text or like required methods rather now the because we're working with the Quantopian web app these look a lot like functions uh, but don't don't let that this fool you these are methods and they're methods that belong to the trading algorithm class of zipline so we're able to do things with methods as if these methods were contained within the trading algorithm class so uh, and instead of self, we're using context for the most part. Uh, and so just just understand that because uh, these are they're gonna they look a lot like functions because they're not being contained within a class or so we think. Uh, but they are in the back end of Quantopian, so that can be kind of confusing. So try to wrap your head around that. I'm gonna call them, or at least I'm gonna try to call them methods, but I'm sure I'll screw up and call them functions from time to time. But they are methods. So you have initialize and handle data methods, and these are required. The initialize method is going to run once upon the starting up of the uh, the class, basically when we create an object. Although you know, again, because of the web app, we're not actually creating an object or in the code, but it's happening. And the, so initialize will run in the code that's under here will run once upon the starting up, and then you have handle data. Handle data is going to run for each period. So in our case, we're going to test on daily data. So it's going to run this code on every day of data. And that's, that's the whole idea of a back test, right? We're going to go day by day through the history and see how we did. Now, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to call one thing and initialize and we're going to modify this context. What context is, is it is a Python dictionary. If you're not familiar with Python dictionaries, I do have a tutorial, a basic tutorial on how they work and how you can set new things and reference parts of the dictionary. So check that out. I'll link to it on this window. Um, and if you're already familiar, cool. So this is a Python dictionary and it's basically how we track the state of our uh, of our trading, right, of our back test, where are we? We define our variables in here. So wherever you might think, hey, I should make a global variable, don't do it. Put it into the context dictionary, <laughs> okay? So first of all, the first thing we need to have is, um, whoops, let's uh, delete this pass here. And what we're going to put here is context.security. And we're going to say that context.security is equal to the symbol for SPY for the SPY, and that is the Spider S&P 500 ETF. Okay, so it basically tracks the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is the top 500 companies or top 500 public companies by market cap. 
So there you go. There's your uh, initialize method. And now we have the handle data method. So what are we going to put in here? Uh, first of all, let's, um, let's get rid of this stuff here. Just delete that and even the order SID stuff. Okay, uh, and then within here, we're going to have a few things. First of all, like I said, I wanted us to have uh, a slow moving average and a faster moving average. So we're going to have MA1, and that will be, this will be our faster, or yeah, we'll make this the quicker moving moving average. So MA1 will be uh, equ the equivalent of the data that we're passing through. Now, what's data? Again, because of the way this Quantopian works in the back end, Again, this is a method, uh, and being passed through data is the data that we're getting on the security of the symbol of spy. They're doing a lot of things in the back end, I, I think, to make it easier, but uh, Quantopian, if you're watching, I really don't understand why you don't have the classes there, because it makes it confusing, especially if, if you don't know Python already and you, you're, you don't really understand, and these look a lot like functions. Uh, anyway, MA1 equals data, and we're going to say data... And again, uh, it will be the data for what? We're going to say the context.security. So we're referencing this up here. And again, if these were functions, we, I mean, we could pass it through here, but we're not actually saying, hey, uh, we never call initialize here. But the reason why we're getting away with this is these are classes and context is basically like our self parameter. Okay. So if you were writing it, you would actually, instead of context, you'd probably use self.security and all of that. Anyway. Uh, to reference, we can reference what the security is. So, like, what is the data that we want? Well, we want the context.security data. So, that would be the spy data. So, we want that data. And this data here is simply uh, pricing data. That's it. There's nothing more to it. It comes out as a data frame. So, for example, we could, um, we could print, uh, should come to a lot. We'll try printing it out and see what it does at least. Uh, but we should have some data there. So, oops, I'm not a string. Print just straight up data as a variable. And uh, we'll see what, what we have there. And then MA1 equals the data of context security. And then uh, we want to apply a moving average. So that's built into Quantopian. So you can do dat, uh, dot. Uh, and then you can just look at a list of stuff that we can do here. Um, so we can actually see all of the things that are a part of this context security. We've got the close price, date time, the high the low, the open, returns volume, and then VWAP is volume weighted um, AP, uh, volume weighted price. I forget what the A is. Adjust Volume weighted adjusted price, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, uh, so what we're looking for is we actually want to apply the moving average. And then this only takes one little property, and that's how many like windows do you want? So over the course of how many days do we want to apply this? And we're going to do over the course of 50 days. Then we're going to define MA2 as the same thing, actually. So let's just copy this, paste, change this to 2, and change this to 200. And then now as we run this program, we want to be able to reference a few different things uh, within the program really quickly. So uh, first of all, we want to know what the current price is at any given time. So we're going to say current underscore price. So to find this variable is equal to data. And then this is going to be context.security, security. So data, context.security, and then remember we can reference elements of this data frame basically, and this will be the price column. Uh, and if you're not familiar with data frames and pandas, I have tutorials on pandas as well. I'll put a little link to them, and you can learn about those as well if you'd like. And then uh, we're going to say we want to know like what kind of positions are we in. So we'll say current positions. Uh, those are going to be equal to the context.portfolio, portfolio, um, dot, and you can see here, see portfolio is also built into Quantopian, and this is where they track automatically a bunch of stuff for you, capital use, cash, P&L, we can talk about that later, the portfolio value, all this stuff is just tracked automatically for us, so we can do all kinds of analysis later on. Uh, so we'll say portfolio dot, but we can track specifically positions, and then we want to track positions for what? We want to track positions for the symbol of uh, the uh, spy. And so when that little window pops up, you just, just click on it and that'll fill it in for you. And then we want to do dot, and then we want to know amount. We want to know how many do we have. And then finally, let's just define one more thing before we wrap this one up. And we're going to say we want to know cash. How much money do we have? That's going to be equal to context.portfolio.cash. Uh, 
and that will tell us how much money we have at the moment. So then we can use these to be like, okay, well, how many stocks can we buy at any one time? Well, we take our cash divided by the current price. That's how many we can buy, right? And how many should we sell if we want to sell everything? Well, we reference current positions maybe or something like that. So anyways, we'll cut it off here. And in the next tutorial, we'll actually start building the logic for our trading algorithm. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments over any of the code up until this point, if there is literally anything you don't understand here, it can be anything. If you're fuzzy or whatever, ask questions below and I will help you uh, figure it out. And it might be that you have to go through maybe some basic tutorials to understand how Python works. Uh, but I also might be able to have something directly to link you to. So ask questions below if you have them. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.